Hello and welcome to my basic Louis guide for maddening. In this guide, I'm going to outline the unit's growths, uh, their basic builds, what they're good at, what they're bad at, pros and cons of the unit. I'm also factoring in availability and other units you get at certain chapters because that does influence a playthrough. So for example, if you level up a unit to level 15, and by the time that happens, the game hands you a unit that has 1500 SP points and better stats, it kind of acts as like, you know, like the game is kind of like replacing that unit. Now for Louie, I don't think that's too big of an issue for him. To some degree, there's, there's some units that could be possible replacements for him. So I'll, I'll mention them. Uh, but let's talk about the unit in general. So early game, he is a very good tank that can basically tank entire maps. So I feel like this kind of warps people's perception of him. Because early game, he's 100% an S tier unit. The only thing that you have to worry about are mages, and there are not very many mages early game. They're very infrequent. But as middle game and end game roll in, his tanking ability diminishes because of the absurd damage output of enemies. They have really high uh, physical attack, and there's also more mages and more enemies with magical weapons, and also more enemies with things like armor slayer and hammer and stuff like that. Uh, but mostly the main thing that's going to pose a threat to him is the the overabundance of enemy mages. There's a ton of enemy mages. He has low speed and low res, so this is a problem for him middle to end game, but early game, not so much, because there's very few mages, and he's kind of like a god early game. But he doesn't remain a god, in my opinion. So that's that's him as a general. That's kind of his overview. All right, so his passive is actually pretty good. It reduces his damage when there's two females that are within two spaces. It's like two female allies. So this also includes magic damage. This is one of his few tools for mitigating magic damage. Other things would be using talismans on him to increase his res, uh, running things like running res plus three on him from Micaiah, which is something he can unlock early if you want to keep him on the tank roll to, to try to mitigate res. Uh, the thing is, magic is always going to be a problem for him on tank, even if you mitigate it. The enemy mages endgame hit really hard with magic so even if you reduce their damage by like let's say 14 because you could get him use two talismans on him that's plus four res use uh get him res plus three from micaiah that's plus seven res so that's minus 14 damage because he gets doubled these enemies have like 40 magic attack they're probably still going to one round him so you could use ike on him this would help but all right let's go into the growth rates all right, so 75% HP, 40% strength, 25% dex and speed, or I'm sorry, 50% defense, 20% res, 25% luck, 15% build. Now, the standout things here are the defense, the strength, the health, and the build. The build doesn't matter because he's so slow that he's never going to double things without you doing some ridiculous build or overfeeding him. So you should just assume he's not going to double things. So the build growth doesn't really matter at all. The speed growth is very low. So as he levels up early game, he's not going to be getting points of speed. So even if you reclass him into a faster class, he's going to have a hard time doubling. However, there are classes that would be good for him. He does have high strength growth and high defense, which allows him to be kind of like a bruiser. So I'm going to outline those builds pretty soon. Uh, so pros and cons of the unit, I would say... Fantastic early game with no work, then middle game needs some adjustments to make him work. I have seen someone post a comment where they mentioned how they got him to be insanely tanky late game, and it involved very specific strategies around like Mercurius and handing him Mercurius and having him get a bunch of kills on Marth. So you have to get him to bond level 10 on Marth, and then you have to have him get kills with Mercurius on enemy phase to feed him a ton of kills and basically just feed him basically just overfeed him maps. So then you're removing, so then instead of like Alir or Chloe getting early game XP, he would be getting it. And this is viable, but it's very specific and you'd have to really go every way to do this. I would argue most players wouldn't think to do this or would do this. This is something more of experts of the game would do. So if you're used to doing things like this, this will definitely improve his mid to late game viability by a huge margin. But if you're just playing the game normally, I would say that's, you know, he's going to have a hard time middle game to end game unless you reclass him. Uh, because 
unless you're overfeeding him, his defense level does not scale well into the like like the halfway point and onward. Enemies just start hitting too hard. Uh, the four movement starts becoming a problem. The game introduces certain mechanics, like certain maps where mobility is a huge concern. There's like fire tiles everywhere. There's like water tiles, you know, in the one beach map where like water rises and lowers. You can have a hard time on that map. So mobility becomes an issue and tanking becomes an issue late game. So those are the pro so strong early game needs some adjustment for late game or you do some XP farming, which is, I don't do that at all. But if you do that and you know how to do that, knock yourself out. <laughs> you can do it. That's fine. All right. Level of investment required for the unit. I would say low investment, it's basically zero investment early game and then low to medium investment, probably low investment to fix him. Like just using a class changing thing, that's not really high investment. That's not like, that's almost no investment. It's not that bad. So I would say like low investment overall. All right, let's go over best classes. So I'm just going to skip everything that I don't think is relevant and just talk about the best classes. All right, so I think Halberdier is one of his best classes. Uh, he doesn't lose that much HP. He has He maintains a decent strength level. The speed doesn't matter. The dex is nice. Uh, Halberdier does improve. So he has 25% dex growth. Halberdier puts him at 45. So it gives him plus 20 dex. The idea behind this build, like a Halberdier build on him, is that he can, he's never going to double. But with Halberdier, he can. So his strength growth is decent enough where if you use him throughout a run and hand him a Silver Lance... He will mess things up with that. So hand him a Silver Lance or a Brave Lance with Ike on it or Roy on it and upgrade them. And he will consistently double. Now you want to run Halberdier with high movement flyers because, with Cantor. So the flyers can attack and kill different targets and then Cantor behind his intended target to enable pincer attack. This is a very effective way of diving. Uh, it enables him to consistently double and deal huge damage while also maintaining his decent defense growth. On Halberdier, it gives plus 15% defense growth, so he would still be at 65% defense growth. It makes him a little bit faster, but he's gonna be getting doubled by most things no matter what he does. So he does get 10% speed on Halberdier, putting him at 35, but he's basically gonna get, be getting doubled. So he's gonna get a little bit of extra defense uh, being on Halberdier, he can probably tank physical still, and he can kind of act as like a bruiser. So he can still, to some degree, take a hit. But on Halberdier, he at least has damage down. So he kind of can tank probably like one to two physical before dying. Maybe two to three if they're not super fast or super damaging. And he can consistently get off pincer attack, and this would work really well with um, more endgame builds like dive and things like that. So Halberdier is a good option for him. Another good option is Warrior. Warrior improves his base strength. This would enable him to be a Brave Axe user. So Brave Axe plus Ike. Uh, he's not going to be as damaging as Panette, who has way higher strength starting out. But he will be a decent Brave Axe user. He also gets access to bows, and he gets access to Merciless. So if you break a foe, if for whatever reason you break a foe, you know, using some kind of mechanic or just breaking the enemy... He can take advantage of that with bonus damage. He also gets access to bows. I think Warrior and Halberdier are his best options. And general late game, if you can make it work, if you can get him leveled up enough, it can be decent, but it still lacks mobility, is weak to mages. And there's also the problem of enemies not attacking him. So when you get a tank's defense so high or too high, they will not get attacked by enemies. If enemies deal zero damage, they do not attack you unless they can set something up or like, you know, stand next to you and then a backup, like so let's say it's a sword master and it stands next to you and then another enemy attacks and it's a backup attack. So they will not attack you if they deal zero damage. So even if you do power level him, you're going to run into this issue where some enemies will attack him, some enemies won't. And the enemies that will attack him will still probably hit hard and the enemies that won't, will hit zero, so then he doesn't give you this advantage of counterattacking enemies during enemy phase and dealing damage that other units like Timera could provide. Uh, Timera with Ike, her defensive stat will never get so high that she's outside of damage, but with Ike popped, she will take almost no damage and double on counterattack and basically get attacked by anything, so as long as you manage 
the damage well and the positioning well, she can be a fantastic enemy phase unit. Uh, whereas Louie, late game, I feel like struggles. And also Gold Mary outshines him. So Gold Mary and Timera are kind of like the middle game tanks the game just hands you. Timera is more of a damage oriented speedy tank. And Gold Mary is more of a straight upgrade. <laughs> like she just has similar defensive growth, uh, better base stats, uh, I think much higher strength. And she also comes with 1800 SP, which is the equivalent of 18 level ups of SP uh, with an emblem ring equipped. So it doesn't take her much to hit 2k. You know, she needs two level ups on emblem ring and then she can unlock other things. So late game tanking, I would say he's competing with other units that just have better bases and have better like niches that kind of outshine him on general. So I would just put him on Halberdier if you want to keep him relevant or warrior. Uh, he can also be a Wyvern, but he's not going to be able to use Brave Axe on Wyvern, so he would probably want to be a Brave Lance Wyvern, and he's still not going to be doubling. So Griffin Knight, I don't think would be good for him. His his base speed is too low. The speed growth of 20% is not going to get him into doubling range of most things, so I wouldn't put him on those. Uh, he has 0% magic growth, so no magic classes, no martial classes. Uh, I don't think... He, I don't think he'd be a good thief because he'd never double, right? Like so, like thief likes to double, right? And he would not be able to double, so a thief would be bad on him as well. I would say really, it's just down to halberdier and warrior. Those are his main classes, and then general. If you want to make it work, great knight. If you want to try that, I've tried great knight out, and I was not very impressed with it. I feel like it just misses a lot. It doesn't have the base speed to double ever. And it doesn't have the high strength to run like a Brave Axe build or just to one shot outside of crits. So maybe if you run crits, maybe p potentially he could do something. But he also has low luck and low dex on average. So that doesn't lend itself well to improving his crit rate. So, all right. Halberdian Warrior, I think. <laughs> the best classes for him. Okay. Early game passives for the unit. Uh, for early game passives, I would say Cantor is probably the number one go-to thing, just to reposition. Uh, it also helps for Halberdier, because when he's on Halberdier, if enemies can hit him, he could easily die, especially to mages. He'll, st he'll basically always have a magic enemy problem, because he's always going to be on low speed, no matter what you put him on. And magic enemies hit his weakness and will double him. So Cantor allows him to dive in, halberdier something with Pinsir, and then get out. And same thing with Warrior. If you want to do a Brave Axe build on Warrior, he's going to want Cantor. Uh, he's also going to want Lance Power on halberdier to just go, go into damage route. And he's going to want Axe Power on Warrior build. I would say those are his two main use cases. Now, if you run him on General, you can run him on General. It is viable. You have to manage the weaknesses of it. You could run things like Silver Great Lance to counter attack on enemy phase, but you need to make sure his defense doesn't get too high so that enemies will actually attack him. And you also need to make sure that his defense isn't too low so that he can tank the enemies you intend on him tanking. So he has to kind of walk this fine line between being tanky enough to tank the like huge groups of enemies, because that's like the big advantage of Armor Knights, and he also has to walk this fine line of not being too tanky so that the enemies actually want to attack him. And of course, he also has to manage enemies with magical weapons like Leaven Sword and Flame Lance and enemy mages that will hit right through his armor no matter what class he's on. So no matter what class he's on, he always has to worry about mages, which is very unfortunate because most units can tank mages easily. So honestly, I would, like Gold Mary's base speed is actually not horrible. I think she's at like 14 speed, maybe 15, or no, she's at like 15, 16 speed on, on general on one of my other, uh, other save files, which is actually crazy because she's actually reasonably fast for a general. So she can probably dodge or avoid getting doubled by some things, but she also has higher base res. I think her res is like 13. So she usually can tank mages, whereas he can't at all. And Jade similarly has more res and can tank mages a little bit better. So, like, if you want, like, a dedicated general, I would say Jade or Gold Mary are better options because of their res. They can at least 
not die to a single mage consistently. <laughs> so in that in that way, he's kind of like Etia who dies to everything, but he just dies to mages no matter what class he's on. Now you could put him on like Griffin Knight that gets his res up, that gets his speed up, maybe gets him out of doubling range, but then he's just going to be like a weak Griffin Knight because he's not going to have the speed to double, which is the biggest reason you run Griffin Knight is to get the speed way, way up so that you can double. So yeah, I'd say Warrior and Halberdier, maybe General, but I would honestly, I would, I would just put him on Halberdier, hand him a Silver Lance and call it a day and run hyper aggressive uh, Wyverns and Griffins that can consistently one round to kill things, then canter behind Louis's target and then he can one round his target. That's how I would use him mid to late game because Gold Mary is just a way better tank. She has better res, better speed. Um, I don't know what her build is. Let me see. Base stats, Gold Mary. I have I have these tabs open at all times. It's funny. Um, base build is 9. Yeah, so her build is lower, I believe. Louis' build. So he has 8 build, and then their build growth rates. I think she doesn't have like high build growth rate like he does. She has 5% build growth rate, and then he has 15, so... Eventually she will get some build. And then if you throw her on general, she hits 15%. So then she gets 1.5 build every 10 level ups. So eventually she'll start getting build. Um, yeah, I think he's outclassed by Timera, uh, by Timera and Goldmary for mid to late game tanking. Now, by tanking, like, these units, most of these units can't tank, like, 10 enemies. They'll tank, like, a squad of enemies, like, 3 to 4 enemies. So most, most of the tanky units can kind of do that. So if you use him in that way, he can be okay. Uh, but there's also just using fast units, tanking a single enemy, like, you know, letting an enemy hit them, counterattack, set up a kill, stuff like that. Just doing that with your entire team. So there's, there's, a, there's an argument to be made against tanking in general. And there's also Bonded Shield, which is crazy. Uh, but that's... Oh, yeah. So let's go over equipment. Uh, so equipment's early game. A Steel Lance like this is really good. But this is basically... In my opinion, this is Chloe's weapon. Because she can one-round everything early game with this. And it's pretty ridiculous. She can even probably solo the maps. Like, there were, there were maps where she was just getting attacked by a bunch of things. And she just kept, like, killing them on counterattack and dodging them. So she could potentially solo most of the early game. But this is, like, Chloe's weapon. Handing him a Steel Lance early is fine. It's a good weapon for him. Handing him a Javelin early is good for counterattacking like archers and enemies like hand axes. This, like, this is really nice to have. Brave Lance would be a Halberdier weapon. Um, you would want to give it a damage boost, probably like Ike or Roy. Uh, you could also give it this one, which I think it's, it's, it's either Leafs or it's someone else's. I don't remember who this one is, but... This emblem in particular scales the damage by one and I think also improves hit rate. So this is a great thing to use. Uh, steel and silver Great Lance can be good when he's on tank. Now Halberdier can't make use of those two effectively because it, those don't double. So you can't pincer attack with those. Uh, Rider's Bane is a good weapon. Rider's Bane plus pincer attack is a really good way of dealing with enemy wolves. Uh, wolf knights are some of the fastest hardest to kill things in the game and usually you can't double them almost ever so if you want to riders bane them this would be a good way of de-wolfing your surrounding area <laughs> so here i honestly i think his best class is probably halberdier i think he because he also has a lance bonus um, not that that matters for halberdier but with warrior he he does get a axes so he can use brave axe so Warrior is definitely viable, but I feel like Panette is just the better Warrior. And he wants to be on something like Halberdier. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Or no, hold on. Emblem Rings. Early game. Uh, Emblem Rings and Passives. I always forget one or two things in these because these ones are longer. Uh, Emblem Rings. Early game. You can throw Marth on him and go for the Mercurius thing to try to power level him. That could make him a, a late game general that's viable. So you could do that. Um, you could run Sigurd on him for mobility and canter, because he is like one of your slowest units. And he does have high strength, so if he Rider's Banes, you know, uses Rider's Bane from Sigurd's Emblem Ring or a, a Steel Lance plus one to three, and uses Override, he could deal pretty serious damage. So Sigurd is actually pretty good on him. Uh, so Martha Sigurd, and then for early game upgrades, I would say Canter or Lance Power. Uh, both are really strong. 
lance power for just like diving in, but Cantor is really good for getting out of danger, and he is going to have a magic enemy problem throughout any run, I think. Unless you put him on something weird that has res and speed, but would basically ruin his damage output. So he is going to have a magic problem. So putting Cantor on him is probably his best bet. Lance power or axe power are both fine. So the, the, the pros and cons of Halberdier versus Warrior. Halberdier, you want Sigurd back. So that happens, I think, after chapter 17. You want Sigurd back so that he can get Lance power and Cantor. But early game, he's probably only going to be able to get one of those. I would say getting him Cantor early makes the most sense. But if you're going to go the Warrior route... You still probably want to get Cantor early because you get Ike, I think like chapter, yeah, end of chapter 13, you get Ike. So then he can get Axe Power pretty consistently. So Warrior, in terms of a playthrough, gives him Axe Power like shortly after you get Cantor. And then it's just on you to get him 10 level ups to get him to Axe Power 1. So this would be like a Brave Axe build and then eventually Axe Power 2. But unlike Panette, I don't know that his health pool is going to be as high as hers by this time it might be so if we look at his growth uh he has 75 percent hp so he might he might have like a high amount of health and then on halberdier he's plus so he's 85 percent health on halberdier and then on warrior he's 100 maybe warrior is best because then he gets the health so halberdier is nice because it consistently doubles, and consistently doubling with an upgraded Silver Lance with, like, Ike or Roy on it would be absolutely crazy. It'd be huge damage. Um, same thing with, like, a Brave Lance, because, you like, with the Brave Axe build, you're not going to double, right? You're just going to hit it twice. So, like, doubling with a Brave is quadding. So he's not going to quad with a Brave Axe, but he could quad on Halberdier. So there's kind of some pros and cons where on Warrior, he gets one point of health every single level up, so if he levels up 20 times, his health starts to bloat, which is got, which is really nice, actually. Uh, he also gets more speed on Warrior and more build. So there's definitely an argument to be made for him being a Warrior versus a Halberdier in terms of health, in terms of extra speed. It also gives more build. You also get bow access, but he would be competing with Panette for a Brave Axe. Uh, you could run multiple Brave Axes, but you can't run multiple Brave Axes with Ike. Only one of them can get Ike. So I would rather him be on Silver Lance. So that way Panette can get the Axe, the Brave Axe. Because she's, she's, she starts out immediately crazy, like with Brave Axe and one runs things. So it's like zero investment. You just hand her the Brave Axe, she just pops off. But him on Warrior, he would end up being really tanky. And it does kind of help his speed, putting him at 40% speed growth which might put him out of doubling range, like getting doubled. So Warrior may be his best class overall, but Halberdier is a good like second option, the more I, I think about this. Okay, so those are early skills and to some degree late skills. Uh, and then I guess I can talk about Emblem Rings mid to late game. Uh, so Emblem Rings for him, he probably wants damage or mobility. Um, Ike on him would always be good because it improves strength and defense, and then he can pop it to have damage, so he can be kind of like a bruiser and also still function as like a tank. So throwing Ike on him would be good for the damage and the tanking. And I don't think he could, he'd could he be really good with like speed builds like Lin or something like that. Obviously things like Makai and Celica wouldn't be very good on him. Uh, Leaf, you know, that would just improve his build and also his health, I believe. So that actually, Leaf could be okay on him just for the health, but like if you want to use stronger emblem rings on someone else, that would be fine. Um, Corrin, I don't think would be good on him. Who else? Lucina, I wouldn't use on him either, because that just improved. That's more for like dex units or for bonded shield users, so he wouldn't really be making good use of that. Uh, Roy would be good for the strength increase and the increased level when you pop him to increase damage output. So I would say Roy, Sigurd, Ike, and then you get Martha again super late. <laughs> so that's not really an option. But yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you find this useful. Also feel free to outline tactics you use on Louie and how you level him up. And you can be very specific if you have like viable end game tactics or mid game tactics for how you keep him relevant. I think statistically though, Goldmary kind of 
puts pressure on him to power level. Like if you want to run him, there's basically no reason to mid like mid game onward as you get Timera and Goldberry because they both do his job better with like no investment. But you could still hyper invest in him to power level him. So there's I'm, I'm curious to see how people use him. That he's really good on general at like late game, like mid to late game. Because I think that the game kind of punishes being too turtly. Like, it, like you still need to kind of slow push, but you have to attack a lot because they just overwhelm you with enemies. So even if you're playing the game normally and you're not making that much, you're not taking that much ground, you're still constantly killing things and repositioning. And I feel like he doesn't do that very well in general. And there's just like some liability aspects to generals being on the field in, in general. Um, but yeah. Definitely let me know how you run him if you disagree with any of my assessment of the unit. Because um, I am curious to see if there's like some... I, I could be missing something, you know, I'm not... I don't have 100% perfect information. I, I wouldn't claim to know everything about everything. That's like insane. Uh, but yeah, thanks for checking this out. Definitely like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.